Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In this video, we're going to continue exploring O2 NLP. And in this particular example, we're going to train a model, or I should say fine tune a model, in order to predict the genre of song lyrics. Okay, so we're going to start from a data set that I found on Kaggle. And uh, we're going to clean it up a bit, prepare it a little bit. And then we're going to feed it to O2 NLP. And this time I will use the command line interface to do this, right? I showed you how to use the uh, user interface in a previous video. So let's see how we can do the same with the CLI, okay? And once we have a model, uh, once again, we will build a small web app with spaces and radio and deploy it so that, of course, we can predict some lyrics and see what happens there. Okay, let's get started. Here's the data set that I found on Kaggle, and thank you to the author for uploading it. It's made of two CSV files. Uh, the first one includes um, artist information, so artist name, how many songs of that artist do we have in the data set. Uh, we have a main genre uh, and a list of more detailed genres. I will take a look at and then we have a lyrics data set where we find the URL that were the, the lyrics were scraped from. We find the actual lyrics, uh, the language for those lyrics. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay. Um, so let's uh, download this stuff. Let's put it in a notebook and explore it a little bit and prepare it a little bit before we can feed it to O2 NLP. Okay, let's do this. All right, so I'm in uh, SageMaker Studio, but of course you could use uh, any Jupyter environment. And uh, I've uh, uploaded the two CSV files, which we can see here, artists data and lyrics data. Okay. Um, so what do we do first? So first, yes, let's close this thing, zoom in a bit. So first we open and load the, the artist file and we see a little more than 3000 artists. Okay, and again, we see the artist name, the main genre, and some additional genres here. Uh, the lyrics file, where we have the, uh, the song name, the URL, the actual lyrics, and the language for those lyrics. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is to join those two files and drop any row that contains uh, null values. And here and now I can see my joined data set. Um, and the first thing I want to figure out is, you know, what languages are in there. So a large number of songs are English, and then Portuguese, and then Spanish, etc., etc. So in this example, I'd like to focus on English only. Okay, so I will drop all songs that are uh, not in English. Okay, just keep the ones that are in English. Um, I'll drop duplicates because I saw in the data set that. Uh, Quite a few songs actually are uh, duplicated, like this one here, and they appear with two main genres. So yeah, I just want to have one row per per song. So just drop any duplicates in here, okay? Um, and then um, experimenting a little bit with the data set, I, I found that uh, the main genre that we see here is actually um, actually has very few values. So I ended up having like pop, rock, and one more. Uh, and I, I found that that list of genres in that last column is actually more detailed. And, um, and so I, I'm going to use this first item from the list here, right, uh, as the main genre instead of this. So obviously I want to split this uh, this list into sub columns, and I'm going to keep only the first one. Okay, so you can easily do this. Split um, that list uh, into as many columns as we have values in the list. Uh, prefix their names with genre. Okay, now I can see so genre zero, which is of course the first uh, item in that genre list, is actually more. Uh, more interesting and has more diversity than the main genre column. But still, that's probably uh, that's probably too many genres for, for us to work with. 
right? Uh, especially since some of them have very, very few values. Right? And some of them overlap, right? So I guess you'd want to spend a little more time than I will here to uh, figure this out, right? We have a lot of rock, okay? And then, you know, we have pop rock and, you know, alternative rock and all sorts of variants here. So, you know, there's a bit of, a, I guess, an imbalance problem. So I'm going to simplify this. I'm going to drop uh, the, the, the less uh, frequent genres. Uh, and I'm going to, like, you know, bundle up uh, a few of the genres. But I think one thing you may want to do here is probably undersample just the rock category here because it tends to uh, to be a little too high for my taste but i haven't done it here good for thought Ex exercise to the viewer okay so like i said um i'm just merging uh, pop rock into pop i'm merging rap into hip-hop i'm merging rock alternativo into indie and hard rock into heavy metal which is a bit of a crime but okay let's not discuss that right now Okay, and so now if I look at the unique values for genres, I still have a lot of rock, I have a little bit more pop, quite a lot of hip-hop, some indie, heavy metal, dance, etc. Okay, but still, probably a little too much rock for, uh, for our own good. Again, undersampling this one could be. Right, so, well, feel free to, uh, you know, use your own... <laughs> weeks if you want to merge uh, disco and dance be my guest um, yep anything goes and of course those genres are a little bit ambiguous right which makes this example quite challenging i think so i will only keep the main genres for the the, the data set rock pop hip-hop indie heavy metal and dance okay the top ones from the list but again feel free to merge them as you like try out other combinations and finally, I only keep two columns in the data set, the lyrics and that genre that we just built. Okay. Um, yeah, drop any null values again, just in case. And we end up with a little more than 53,000 songs. And of course, two columns, the lyric and the genre, right? So that's what the data set looks like now, right? Um, I'm going to need to store this in CSV files, right? Because O2NLP works from CSV files. So to avoid a lot of issues, I'm just going to drop all commas um, that may be present in lyrics, okay? Just replace them with uh, an empty space, right? Finally, I split the data set for training and validation, 90% for training, 10% for validation. And I save those two splits to CSV, right? So I'm sure a lot of you here are thinking, oh, well, there's so much more we could do on the data. And you're certainly right. Yeah, I just wanted to keep this example, um, you know, lightweight, try some quick, um, quick uh, tweaks on the data. And you can certainly go and experiment. That, uh, that notebook will be available in, of course, in the video description. Okay, so now we have our CSV files. So let's open up a terminal and use the O2NLP CLI to get a job going. Okay, let's do this. In a previous video, I showed you how to build O2NLP models with the UI. But this time, let's use the CLI for a change. Okay, so as you would expect, the CLI is an open source project. You'll find it in, uh, on GitHub in the Hugging Face repo. And you can easily install it. I just type pip install O2 and LP and you should be fine, right? Okay. So once you've installed the package, the first thing you want to do is to log in to uh, Hugging Face using your API token, okay? Which you'll find in your account settings. So I've already done this and let's take a look at some of the options that, right? Okay, so log in. Done that, create project, project info, upload, train, metrics. Okay, we'll look at a few of those. So first of all, let's create a project, okay? Which uh, is pretty simple and do it this, right? Okay, so uh, auto NLP, create project, 
project name, language, task you want to work on, and the number of models. Okay, so we'll go and do this. Fine, so project has been created. And of course, now we need to upload some data, right? So we have our data files here, the training set, the validation set. Remember how they look, two columns. Um, the lyric is called lyric and the label is called genre zero. So we need to map those values to what the model expects and the model expects text and label. Okay, so we do that. First upload in that project, uh, train.csv, which is the training split. And we map lyric to text and genre zero to text. Okay. And of course we need to do the same for validation. After a few seconds, my training set has been uploaded. Let's do the same for validation set, right? Just same mapping, of course, just change the name. And again, you know, that one should be faster because it's quite smaller. Okay. Okay, so both splits have now been uploaded. And well, the last thing is to start training. Okay, so just take that command right there and launch it, and off it goes, right? So it's gonna run for a little while. Oh yeah, of course it's going to estimate cost. And yeah, I think I'm fine with this. So I'll just go and launch it. Okay, and while it runs, I can get some information using the project info command, right? Oh, and of course, I can see the job in the UI as well, okay? Five jobs. Okay, exactly what we saw in the previous video. So, uh, in the interest of time, I've, uh, I've run this already. And I actually ran 15 uh, jobs, okay? Exact same data set. Um, and I got a top, so it ran for about, yeah, the, this one really lasted long for three and plus hours, but generally, uh, yeah, it was about an hour and 20 minutes or something. Um, and this little guy here was the best, right? So 66.8 accuracy, um, which isn't bad for a, a multi-class classification problem, uh, especially given you know the ambiguity of those genres uh, you know if we listen to different songs you know some of us would think it's pop some of us would think it's rock uh etc etc so fine and i i guess you know we'll know uh, if this really worked once we once we deploy the model okay okay so what else can we do here um oh we can predict directly from here Okay, so now we see predictions for the genres in the data set. Dance, 2%. Mm -hmm. Heavy metal, 1.6. Hip-hop, 5%. Indie, 18%. Pop, 12%. Rock, 60%. Yeah, I like to rock. is rock lyric. Okay, that's reassuring. Um, so let's do a little better than this. And um, we can create a web page with spaces uh, where we'll be able to copy actual lyrics and see what the scores are. Okay, so let's do this. In a previous video, I showed you um, how to build your own space using uh, Gradio uh, or Streamlit. Um, I actually used Gradio, which is simple for me. And it's uh, just a Git repository where you uh, push your uh, Python code uh, that creates the web page. Uh, I've already done this. This is actually public. Uh, so uh, if you go at this URL, which I'll put in the video description, you will be able to uh, test it for yourself. And it is a Git repo. So here's my code, right? We can look at the fancy app that I wrote. Okay, so this is the best model from my auto NLP job. Loading its tokenizer, loading the model itself, loading the class labels. And then very similar to the previous example, uh, I write a prediction function that takes the lyrics as input, tokenizes them, predicts them, 
uh, applies a softmax function to the predictions to make them look like probabilities. And then I just uh, print the top three jours. So I arc sort get uh, top indexes in the right order. And I use those indexes to display predictions. Okay. And my UI is very simple. I've got a, a large input box to paste my lyrics in and um, auto generated buttons that uh, invoke the predict function and display the output in out text output, right? Simple enough, right? So how does it look? Well, let's go back. And it looks exactly like this, right? Nothing too fancy, but enough for our demonstration okay so let's grab some lyrics um oh, i'm gonna try okay let's try the cure okay boys don't cry I'm sure you know that one so what is this song let's just go and run this in our app okay click on submit call the predict function yeah you get the id Okay, so 66% rock, 24% pop, a little bit indie. That's all right. That's all right. It, it is a bit of a poppy song, for sure. Especially for The Cure. They have much darker stuff. But this one is a little bit poppy. So I think I'm okay <laughs> with this classification. And feel free to disagree, of course. All right. We're going to try something else. How about the Wu-Tang Clan? Okay. And I have to say, it was difficult to find a song without any profanity here. Although I'm, pr oh no, there is profanity. All right, sorry about that. But I guess, you know, it goes with the territory of the Wu-Tang Clan. And let's just try this one. And click on submit. Oh, 96% hip hop. Okay, right. So I guess they're not going to come after me. They're definitely hardcore hip hop. All right. And last but not least, we're going to try Metallica. Ride the Lightning, one of my favorite songs. And hopefully, this is heavy metal. Yep. Okay. About 70% heavy metal, 28% rock. That's fine. So I didn't have any subgenres of metal. So those of you who are screaming oh but it's thrash metal yeah you're right but okay heavy metal is the closest thing i have in my set okay all right well again this is a public url you can go and, and try it for yourself um this is just a pretty uh a pretty fun demo i hope and once again it shows that um writing literally no machine learning code at all you can train um nlp models with auto nlp so last time around, we tried a, a binary classification problem. This one is multi-class. And, I, you know, I guess I'll keep exploring and try to build models for the other test types, see how we can do. And, of course, spaces is just a super easy way, even for a, a UI noob like me, to write uh, a page, a web page that can let me test my model. Show it to all of you out there, right? So pretty cool. Check out all the links in the video description. I hope this was fun and a little bit informative too. And I'll see you soon with more videos. Bye-bye.